Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. This is Elizabeth Townsend Gard, your host, and I'm a law professor at Tulane University Law School and a faculty fellow at the A.B. Friedman School of Business at Tulane. And I just want a quilt. So Carly Porter joins us for a third time. She talks to us about the classes that she, she has online, about her digital patterns for embroidery and for long arming, and she does just uh, talks to us about lots of really, really cool things. So Carly's back. digital design. So first, um, this is part three. This is Elizabeth Townsend Garden. and I'm talking to Carly Porter and we're going to, and we already talked about all kinds of things, all kinds of things, her history, her new company, um, but we just didn't get through everything. So we're going to do one more, at least one more um, interview and that's really on digital designs and that's, I think, really where you started to make your name. Is that right? Is that like the first big yeah, thing you were yeah. working in? Yeah, that was kind of my very humble beginning. <laughs> really, yeah. um, which is kind of cool because I I have a decent background in technology fields. You know, like I studied graphic design in college. I'm married to a computer whisperer programmer. Uh-huh. And so um, when I got into quilting, it was kind of just logical for me to apply my ability to digitize from using Illustrator and stuff in school Yeah, um, to apply it to quilting. So. Yeah, so that's kind of how I, when I very first got into indus- in the industry, the first kind of business thing or like professional thing that I did for my own business was um, computerized quilting designs. Yeah. That's very cool. Um, so tell me about, so I'm at your website, tell me about how you approach, so there's two kinds of digital designs it seems like, one for embroidery and one for long arm quilting. Is that true or can they be used interchangeably? Um. Yes. <laughs> so um, pretty much every quilting design that you have can technically be used on an embroidery machine, mm-hmm. um, but not every embroidery machine design that you have can be used on a quilting machine. So the biggest difference is with a quilting machine, there's no feed dogs or anything. You just have access to essentially a straight stitch, right? So right. like on a sewing machines we have a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch and a satin stitch and a blanket stitch we have all these different types of stitches yeah Um, because with an embroidery machine there's a mechanism that moves the hoop around right as it's stitching the embroidery design the hoop is moving but on a quilting machine the entire movement is the machine itself and so um so when you have a quilting design it's always a straight stitch. It's always a a single line stitch. So you can do single line stitches on an embroidery machine, but you couldn't really take an embroidery design that has a satin stitch in it and put it on your quilting machine because your quilting machine wouldn't really jump back and forth the way a an embroidery machine does. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And it seems like embroidery machines also, if you're going to take a computerized program and put it into an embroidery machine, some embroidery machines allow you to automatically cut the thread and move it and do all kinds of things, and it seems like that wouldn't be happening on a long arm. If you had a computerized long arm, maybe it does, but it doesn't seem like that might be also a hitch, maybe? Right, right. One one other big difference with embroidery is typically you have multiple colors. So yes. like in an embroidery right. design, it might consist of six different colors. Right. Um, and in quilting, before I... You know, well, I mean, I I feel like from what I've seen, and like I've said in previous interviews, I kind of make it a point to not educate myself on other people's designs just for the sake of staying authentic. But Mm -hmm. um, from what I have found, my computerized quilting designs are the only ones that also incorporate multiple colors. So um, when I, it's funny because when I first got into digitizing, Again, with all the other avenues of quilting that I got into, it seemed like there were always these rules, right? Right. So, like, when we first start learning how to quilt, there's all these, like, rules to follow, like, quarter-inch seam allowance, stitch length, like, all of these things that people seem to just say were rules. Yeah. And I kind of just found myself, time and time again, breaking them, 
but knowing why. So like there's people who break the rules without even knowing what the rules are. Yeah. And then there's people who learn the rules and then deliberately break them. Yeah. And I would consider myself of the latter. Right. Um, An educated rule breaker. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, so that's one of the things that's kind of really interesting that I'd love to dive deeper into with yeah. quilting is basically, um, creating designs where you're almost teaching your quilting machine how to be an embroidery machine. Oh, that's interesting. So it's kind of, yeah, kind of um, combining the two. Because for a long time, I didn't have an embroidery machine, but I wanted to create embroidery designs. And I thought, if I can utilize the straight stitch of a quilting machine, right. I can make designs that look like embroidery. They just were technically done on a quilting machine. But I had to break some of the digitizing rules to do it. So, right. <laughs> so interesting. So how? Um, I just love your stuff. It's so cool. Um, so tell me how you go about designing. I think you've talked to this before. When you're designing something, like you've got edge to edge, that makes sense. You're going to make a pattern, and you're going to duplicate it. And like, there's certain things you're thinking about. I guess my question is for someone who's just thinking about this stuff, about embroidery and uh, long arm uh, patterns, how do we start to understand, you know, what makes a good one? What we should we be thinking about? I guess I'm just kind of at the very beginning of thinking about these things on both levels, you know? Um, well, there's so, there's so much involved with just aesthetic. So what yeah. could be good to one person might be totally ugly to another. Yeah. Um, which is fine, you know, that's, I think that's the great thing about how many people are digitizing is that there's kind of an aesthetic for everyone. Yeah. Um, I feel like my aesthetic is super specific, just like with graffiti quilting, I yeah. kind of have a specific style of digitizing. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, that's kind of a loaded question. It is I a lot, like, right? But I think, I guess there's like two aspects to think about it. One is if you're going to design it, and I think that, that we can put that aside for just now. So I think that there are a lot of different places to get – sorry, kitten is getting really chaotic. Oh, it's um, so cute. Like um, it's so cute. So I'm a consumer. I have a embroidery machine that allows me to add, um, you know, through a, um, a thumb drive other patterns – what should I be looking for? How do we start to understand this world? How do we operate? It's just in the embroidery side. Like when you're going to, like, are all designs the same in terms of quality? Like, what should we be looking for if we're going to sort of start? So I've never put one on, I've never, you know, we just, we just got the machine. So, you know, and which is great. Um, but mm -hmm. we're now sort of starting to think about like, well, what is this exactly? And so tell me a little bit more about sort of the beginning to think about adding patterns to a embroidered machine okay so so embroidery specifically is such a different ball game to yeah. quilt. so i i would almost consider quilting designs and embroidery designs like cousins yeah they they're in the same family but completely separate parents so yeah. like the way they're created um yeah. Kind of the evolution of embroidery is very different from the evolution of computerized quilting. So I think cousins is kind of a That's good... That's a great idea. That's a great way to think of it. Um, yeah. So with embroidery design specifically, well, and I guess you could really apply this to quilting designs as well. I think something that's really important to consider is the source of the designs. Um, and I, I know from personal experience having digitized quilting designs for so long... Mm -hmm that you can't always necessarily apply all the same skills of quilting digitizing to embroidery digitizing. So like if you're, if you're getting, if you're searching for a design that is solely for an embroidery machine, right. Um, there's so many more aspects involved. Like, so for instance, when you digitize an embroidery design, you have to think of like satin stitches versus fill stitches. Right. And, um, under stitching like that's something that you don't ever see yeah but makes a huge difference so like a design can look totally beautiful digitally but then when you um, stitch it out on your embroidery machine if it doesn't have uh, kind of specific underfill stitching yeah then it 
could totally scrunch your fabric. And then the choice of fabric is a whole different thing too. Like what kind of stabilizer are you using? Are you trying to do something on stretchy fabric? Um, So there's so many more facets with embroidery that it's, it's such a more complex type of file that you're getting a more complex digital design. Um, So I would say, I guess my biggest advice for someone who is searching for um, embroidery designs Mm -hmm. is I would say start with a reputable source. Yeah. So find, find a design that you like just by that one design and stitch it out before you go like totally crazy and buy a ton of them because um, they could look good on screen, but if the person who digitized them didn't really know what they were doing, right. then they may not stitch out so the do, way. So like, try a test one and see if you like it yeah. and then go yeah. back and do yeah. it. For sure. Now it looks like from like I'm looking at your machine embroidery stuff. What's cool about the things that you create is it looks like it can be done. There are these huge circles of coolness. Um, they you could do it on a long arm, but it's got that kind of embroidery kind of yeah. thing. That's what you were saying. Yeah. So yeah. So when I for me specifically as a as a digitizer or as an artist of computerized designs. Um, I chose specifically when I got into embroidery to stick with, at least so far, I would like to hope that throughout my career, I'll continue to progress with embroidery and get into other things. But um, what I chose specifically to do with my embroidery designs as I was getting into the embroidery arena is Mm -hmm. to stick specifically to straight stitches. So that way, anyone who buys any any embroidery design on my website yeah. will automatically be able to also use it on their quilting machine. So That's I wanted to cool. make sure that I could always say that, like, if you're buying a design for me, right. you get the whole bang for your buck. If you just do quilting, you can use it. If you just do embroidery, you can use it. And if you have both, you can use it That's um, on both cool. of those systems. So, Um, yeah. So like, if you look at my website and even with my quilting designs, before I got into embroidery, Mm -hmm. um, I, I knew that my designs would be compatible with embroidery. And so Mm -hmm. anyone, anywhere, if they purchase any digital design from my website, if it doesn't come packaged with the embroidery file, Mm -hmm. all they have to do is email me and say they want the embroidery file and I can export it and send it to them at, um, no extra charge. So Something that's kind of nice that I nice. I tried really hard when I got into embroidery yeah. to make sure that I was only providing the highest quality and yeah. not not sacrificing the digitizing quality for the right. sake of you know getting into the embroidery field. Right. So now yeah. we had this discussion on the Facebook group, which I thought was really interesting, and I wanted to talk with you about because I love your designs. We haven't gotten um, the computerized uh, part of the long arm yet, but we're hoping to get that soon. And there was a conversation of like, well, is it cheating to have it um, computerized? And that, what do you think about that argument? Because I mean, I'll tell you what I think afterwards, but I'm curious about like what role does computerized quilting have? And and is it like that old timey kind of, you shouldn't use a machine to quilt, you should hand quilt kind of thing? No, I think it's silly. It's like, that's like saying if you sketch with a mechanical pencil, you're cheating. Yeah. Like. That's, it's silly to me. It, I mean, it's silly at all that people will say that a finished quilt was somehow cheated. Like, to me, cheating means doing something and not getting the same result. Yeah. But, like, I am so, like, it just drives me nuts when people say that things are cheating. Because it's like, there are so many different ways to accomplish a quilt. Yeah. That just because it's not a traditional way doesn't mean that it's wrong or that it's bad. Right. Um, and honestly, anyone who has a computerized quilting system mm-hmm. can tell you that understanding how to run that machine yeah. is its own part art form. Yeah. You know, like it's a whole different ball game to understand yeah. how to manipulate pre-digitized digital design. So definitely, no, it's not cheating. And if someone thinks that, then that's silly. That's and silly. Yeah, it I'll seems like that's silly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it has skill. I also think that there is still selection and management and coordination of the quilt itself. That you're still choosing the designs. Right. I also exactly. feel like, look, I've been trying to quilt every night for a year. Like that's mm-hmm. been one of the things, and free motion as well. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard. Um, I think I'm better than I was a year ago, but I'm not like what you do, right? And so I think that there's something to be said 
for appreciating the work. Like, I think there's nothing, like, I don't think, I mean, I'm, yeah, I could take your classes and you would say, I'll get better. I totally will. So, um, <laughs> but I also do see, see a place for, um, this is part of people's quilts. I don't think that, I mean, I think that we have fabric patterns. We, 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 you know, we buy Tula pink fabric cause we love the fabric and we put it into our quilts. Right. Um, I want to put a Carly Porter, um, design as part of the, um, quilting. I think that's similar. Do right. you think? No, like, I, I you would know? say that's exactly the same. Like yeah. you're choosing, it's almost, yeah, it's like saying that buying print fabric instead of solids is cheating. Yeah. Because it's somehow enhancing your quilt with work that you didn't personally do. And that's silly, like, that's a silly, it, like, no one could say that about printed fabric. No, but I do think we're now there with long arm with printed designs that, um, and sometimes you want polka dots and super simple and sometimes you want something more significant. Right. right. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. excited. I, I, we're, we're, we're thinking about um, that next stage of getting the – because I think it's really important as part of the experiment to understand sort of what this is. Obviously, the intellectual property stuff as well. So let's talk right. about that part of these designs. So when you purchase, like I say, okay, I'm going to get let's, – let's talk – I think it, I suspect it has two levels to it, but I could tell, I'm not sure if you'll agree with it. I think there are some of your designs that you'll see as really basic and that whether whatever people do with it, you really don't care. That would be, I would imagine. Meaning that if they put it into a quilt, if they're a professional long armor, you're okay with it. If they sell them on Etsy with that design, that it doesn't matter. Is that true? Or, or do you have a, do you have a, the thing I'm thinking about is there are some that are so complex and so you that it would be, you might feel differently about, say, your lion one or other things. You know what I'm saying? Like, or do you feel that way? Do you feel protective of all of them? I think I definitely do care about every single design, whether it's simple or complex. I mean, there is yeah. a level of caring, but I do think that it's a sliding scale, kind of like you said. Yeah. Like, um, so for instance, let's take like an edge to edge. So yeah. an edge to edge quilting design that someone would purchase, put on their quilting machine, repeat it and finish a quilt with it. Right. Yeah. I, and I get this question a lot, especially from um, quilters who quilt for hire. Right. Yeah, so right. a lot of quilters will say, I love your designs. I want to use them. I want to use them on customer quilts. What's your policy? Yeah. That's exactly and what I'm want, getting at. That's And right. I want to preface this by saying as a designer of digital designs, it's up to me to decide how I want to run my business and what policies I want to put in place. Right. So and what I do for me, and that's just let's just pause there, so because we're starting to do the, our copyright stuff. I mean, more seriously, um, which is Section 106 of the Copyright Act, which allows the copyright holder to decide who what get to reach who reproduces it, distributes it, right. all that. That's part of having a copyright um, right. is those 106 rights. Okay, so right. continue. So, so I want to preface that with that just because like, yeah, just exactly like you said, you get to decide how your art is used. There might be people who don't give a crap and that's fine. So yeah. if someone is technically infringing on the copyright, if the copyright holder doesn't care, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so my policy that I do, especially for um, computerized quilters who quilt for hire, yeah. the thing for me is like, I... I want to support other quilters like me, right? Yeah. So if you are running a business and quilting for people is your livelihood, yeah. I'm going to do what I can to support you, just like you've done what you can to support me by buying my designs, right? Right. So what I say to them is I consider my designs as a tool for a quilter. I like that. So if you are a long-term quilter and you quilt for hire and you purchase one of my designs, I allow you to use it like you would any other tool. So if you charge someone to cut fabric and you have a rotary cutter, every time you cut someone's fabric, <laughs> you are charge totally charging. To That's funny. Cutter, I like that. Right? Yeah. So this is just another tool that you use. Right. You're not going to say, okay, well, if I make you a quilt, I have to use my rotary cutter that I've already purchased and it was $15 and you have to pay $15 for the, for right. the rotary That's cutter. That's not what I you're doing. It's right. not fair. It, yeah. And just like any other tool as a quilter, yeah. you're, you're, I, don't, I don't let them charge for that. So if a customer says, hey, here's my quilt. I want you to quilt it. I want you to use this Carly Porter design. The quilter can't say, okay, well, that's $15 because that's what I paid for the design. 
they can purchase the design once and use it as many times as they want, but they can't charge the customer for that design every time they use it. They can't charge every time they use it because they don't have the right to do that. They right, could, right. yeah, that makes sense to me. I could see that. Right. So they can't, so it's a digital money. file. It's yours. Right. They've paid for a license to use that digital file. Right. They can't resell that licensed digital file um, as part of what they're doing. Now, let's their- say I come to you. Let's say I go, hey, I found this really cool Kylie Porter thing. I want you to make, I want I want autumn wind on it. Can And then do, can I purchase it or can they add that to my bill? But then they wouldn't have any right to use it after Correct. they, Correct. right? Right. And so, yeah. So, I mean, it is kind of a blurred line. And, and that's the thing is like, this might sound like, oh, well, technically it's still the same thing. I'm only making 15 bucks for autumn wind, mm-hmm. right? But really it's the principle behind it's it. It's hugely important, right? Important. I think yeah. it's, yeah, it's so very important because one of the things that's happening is, It's a license. I think what you're giving them is a license to use the pattern. You're not giving them the right to resell the pattern either to a customer or they can't say, I'm not using this file anymore. Does anybody want it? There's no resale right to it as well, right? Right. Right. Yeah. And that's what makes digital files different than say if they went and got, if you put out a book and they took the book and they were using it as like a panograph or something like that, they were using it, but they weren't. Digital is different in our world, so that's really right. interesting. You yeah, you can't really gift a digital file to someone else, right? So that's what that's what awesome. happens when people um that people got very upset when um they wanted like if somebody dies, like what happens to their Apple Music kind of thing? There's a whole bunch of stuff like that. Like you know, oh. like do they have the right to to um, give their music to somebody else in their will? Um, mm-hmm. And that becomes like a whole thing, yeah. I mean, I guess as since I get to run my own policies, yeah, I yeah, that I don't know, that's so crazy. I yeah, I mean, so. you could see though if someone let's say someone says, "Look, I now have arthritis. I'm and I'm finishing my business. I give to Susie all of my business, and that's part of the business. That's different, I think, than yeah. saying, "Hey, everyone, I'm not using this Carly Porter design. Anyone want to buy it from me?" It's really different. Yeah. I mean, you're selling them the tools, like you said. Like you're selling them all the stuff, and so it's sort of part of the business sale as opposed to um, trying to resell right. a pattern. Right. Does that seem right? right? Well, yeah, and really, my biggest purpose is I want to support the people who are also running businesses. Yeah. You know, like I have a um, a computerized quilting design loyalty club specifically for people like this so So tell me where i find that so if you go to shop digital designs and then at the bottom of that drop down loyalty club Club. cool yeah and this was kind of something that i implemented because i wanted to show business to business support and anyone can sign up for this club so like if you're just so avid at quilting and you know you're gonna buy x amount of dollars worth of designs every month then yeah. definitely sign up for the club because you're going to get a huge discount for money that you're already spending um okay so tell me but, what the tell me how it works because it's confusing so, so there's lots of clubs out there like there's yeah. lots of computerized quilting designers who will do like like traditionally what i've seen my club is the only one like this that i've seen on the market so what that's different from these traditional ones so a traditional one would be like you pay me 30 bucks a month and then every month I email you a folder with like a hundred dollars worth of digital designs. Right. Right. I don't like that model at all. Cause yeah. what if you only like 10 of those designs? <laughs> right. What if they just send you stuff that they might like, but to you is garbage. Like yeah. it's almost like saying, okay, give me, give me 20 bucks a month and I'll send you five random CDs. Like what's right. the chance I'm going to listen to that? Like, it might just be garbage to me. Yeah. So with my club, what I do is instead of getting a folder of designs, yeah. when you sign up, so like for instance, my um, platinum club is $50 a month. Yeah. And the first month that you're signed up, you get a gift card for $75 okay. and you go pick out whatever designs you want so that you're actually building a library with designs yeah. that you're going to use, right? Right. So the first month is 75 the second month you pay fifty dollars, so it's always fifty dollars a month. Uh-huh. The second month you get a hundred dollar really gift cool. card, and then right. every month after that, for fifty bucks a month, you get one twenty five. 
it for 50. That's really right. amazing. That's great. Right. So this is so, so good for yeah. people. So there's lots of people who quilt for hire yeah. that will just make a list of the designs from my website. And then yeah. once a month, they'll use their coupon code right. for the designs to build their library. And then they can go to their customer with this huge binder and say, here are all the designs right. that I have access to. That's really cool. And you can pick any one you want. And, and then, then you've got can... another one that's for $25 a month. So yeah. you've got yeah. month Lower. 135 45 Then by month three, you... Each month you get fifty-five dollars worth of material for twenty-five. Now, let's say I forget and I don't use it. Does it expire at the end of that month? Yep. Okay. yep too bad. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing that I feel like this is a trade-off because I feel like doing this um, loyalty club. Yeah. Obviously, I'm. I could make more money if people just bought the designs randomly, right? But if they're willing to commit to me monthly to basically pledge their money every month yeah no it's great and I'm willing to pledge this coupon every month but it is something that because it's a love it. the way my back-end system works on my website it is a use it yeah. or lose it so most yeah. people will just set an alarm on their phone and just do, do it or do it on the first of the month or something like that yeah yeah that's so really it's cool. not too bad yeah oh I love it I think that's really cool yeah. so it's kind of fun I really like that just because I feel like it's such a good business exchange like I want to support yeah. quilters and I yeah. and it really goes so far when quilters are willing to put their money where their mouth is monthly yeah. and support you know yeah and so I think it's just a good trade-off because it is such a deep discount I mean when you pay yeah. 50 bucks and you get 125 dollars worth of designs that's like 60 percent off that is so you know it's it's, it's a huge. good discount. yeah it's, it's really, really huge so, and you've got yeah. enough because you've got such a deep catalog that right. you've and got enough new ones all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's really interesting. Um, and then tell and me that about it's to the embroidery designs as well. It's it really does. any digital design yeah. in my library. And so now that I'm starting to get more into embroidery, there may be people who only do machine embroidery and don't do quilting. Mm -hmm. There's still a selection for those people as well. So Yeah. No, I think that's really that's really cool. I love it. Yeah. I really yeah. think that's very cool. We're going to have to um, we are, as I said, we're working on this, so we'll have to um, sign up and have that as part of our thing. Because I think it's, first of all, I love your stuff. You know, I do. I'm totally like way into like, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I want to make that one and that one and that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think that's really interesting. Now, when, since they are digital, I'm curious, I, wait, I'm going back, digital designs, you have a clearance section. Tell me about that. So I think that's really interesting. And the clearance section looks like a lot of sale items that are more simple in some way. So right. I'm right. curious about so that. So the clearance section, there will periodically be other stuff in the section as well. But I kind of started it with my um, my simple block collection. So these are perfect for people who are just starting out with um, computerized quilting yeah. and just want, want kind of stuff to practice with. Yeah. Um, and I also kind of use this as a good exchange. Like this is kind of the gateway to help people get to know me. So yeah. Um, so it's like if you purchase one of my clearance designs, that's great. It was super cheap, and that's awesome. But yeah. it also gives you a chance to do what you said, right? Yeah, Try it out of, a little bit. Yeah, get a chance to, um, uh, basically, yeah, test out test out my my quilting, which is good. Um, I don't know. So the clearance section is just kind of a fun way for people to get to know me a little bit without yeah. having to put up, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty bucks or whatever. Right. Um, but it also is a good chance for me to get to know them because then I can kind of reach out and say, how did you like it? Yeah. Are you interested in other designs? And, you know, kind of build a relationship that's super low, yeah. low um, risk. Interesting. All right. Yeah. So you have to tell me a little bit about your Russian m mosque collection because that's okay. a bit pricey and really complicated. So I'm yeah. curious, sort of tell me a little bit about that. Um, it's like um, a whole cloth with rainbow. We're on, I always forget that we're audio. Um, like it's got all your graffiti stuff in there. It's huge. It's amazing. Um, but it's also 150 bucks. So I'm curious sort of what your thoughts were behind that one. Okay. So I'm glad that you asked me about this because I feel like this is a good example of how I'm kind of breaking the rules of what traditional digitizing is all about. Yeah. So when I first learned how to digitize or when I was first getting into it, w there were a couple of rules. One of them was that every single part of your design has to be a continuous line. Yeah. Like 
oh, the quilter wants it all to stitch out without any starts and stops. Yeah. And the other thing was it all has to be one, or you assume that it's all one color because it's all one line, right? Uh-huh. And then the third rule was that, like, your design should be, um, like, a certain amount of density and there should be, like, echoes that are a certain distance apart so that the density is perfect, right? Yeah. So these rules, I guess, they are applicable, like, if you're doing, like, a simple edge-to-edge design that's uh-huh. supposed to look like a pantograph, but my designs are not geared towards also being printed so that's what I learned is these rules came about because these digital designers would want to be able to not only sell the digital file but be able to print a plotter and sell a pantograph yeah where I'm not I don't do that at all I don't I mean some of my designs would apply as a pantograph but I'm not I don't have a printer that I'm gonna print a pantograph for anybody right so Russian mosque is such a good example of how what can happen when you know how to break the rules and why to break the rules. So, so it's super densely stitched. Um, and it has multiple colors, obviously, which means there has to be start and stops, but I also designed it in a way that you could quilt it as a small wall hanging, or you could quilt it row by row and have a king size quilt of the design. So it's super versatile in that way. Yeah. Um, and there's another one that's very similar that I did right before Russian Mosque, and it's called um, Carly's All Over. All Over Graffiti Quilt, right. Yeah. And right. that one is super awesome. Because I like that it, one, too. That's great. Yeah. So that one was, like, born out of necessity in a way that when I started getting into quilting for hire, I didn't mm-hmm. really do local stuff. Like, I wasn't really... I already had quilters in my area that kind of were monopolizing the guilds, which is great because they Mm -hmm. could do everything. Um, But I was known for graffiti quilting, right? So people would ship me their quilt tops from all over the world. (laughs) Right. And you got, oh my goodness. And there's a lot of work. Yeah. And so I got to the point where I was doing so much just edge to edge graffiti quilting. And I thought to myself, how can I support other quilters in doing this so that I you know, like I just didn't have enough hours in the day to do all the work, but I could also yeah. support other quilters in the process. And so I designed the all over graffiti quilting pattern so that other quilters could offer that style yeah. and quilt for those people and, you know, accept that money for that, for that trade. So yeah. um, that one and Russian mosque are very similar in that yeah. they can be stitched yeah, to any it. size and that each row is different. So yeah. it's not a repeatable pattern. It's one, it's a collection which yeah. is why it costs what it does. So like yeah. with Russian Mosque, there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 11 rows. Yeah. And if you think if one edge to edge design costs $15, right. I basically had to design 11 different rows. Right. And so that's where the price of 150 came from is yeah. that it was a lot more work to digitize. Um, and it's a lot more marketable in my opinion. Like yeah. it can be, more ways than one so yeah um, yeah so that's why it's priced the way it is because it's not Very just one design it's a whole collection I love of it so um embroidery so we can use your 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 designs on embroidery machines is that right some of them yeah so if you when you look on my website um it depends on which design so if they're in the machine embroidery catalog yeah. portion of my website then that means that the file that you download will automatically have all of the quilting designs and all of the embroidery designs. Yeah. Um, if you find a design that's just in like my general quilting library, it may not come pre-packaged with embroidery, but yeah. I will honor the purchase of those designs and provide the embroidery for it. That's so, so cool. Now, I think what's so cool about the embroidery designs, now again, I'm not super familiar with it, but I love your greeting card collection. Aren't they so cute? I'm so glad you talked about those because yeah. I was just thinking like that is, they're so fun. I love using them. <laughs> well, they're so great because like, who you know, like, it's I don't know. I still can't figure out what you do with right? embroidery. So, I mean, I think like there, right. there's that too, you know. Yeah, it's fun. You just stitch out a bunch of them at once and then you put a backing on them and satin stitch around the edge and then you write a cute note. And it's actually a card that people will keep, you know, like I right. get a lot of, like, especially around Christmas, you get so many greeting cards that right. you're like, that's awesome. And then you hold on to them for a little bit, a little bit. And then, right. and then what, you know, and so those are fun because it's something that, 
you know, someone could actually like hang up by their desk at work or. Yeah. No, I love it. They're, um, they're really great. They're, and they're four inches. They, and they finish at four inches, four by four. Yes. So they're little. Yeah. 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 They're very and cute. Mo- a lot of embroidery machines, depending on the advancement of your embroidery machine, you yeah. could potentially blow it up. Like there are some really super fancy embroidery machines that you can blow up a design to whatever size and it'll automatically yeah. um, adjust like the stitch length and stuff. Yeah. My embroidery machine that I have right now is really entry level. And so yeah. kind of have to be within a half inch or an inch of what design you want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so these come at a four by four, but again, I honor the purchase. And so if you emailed me and said, Hey, I need this at a 12 by 12, I would just have to re-export it to that specific file, but yeah. I'm totally happy to do that for Got anyone it. who buys my Very stuff. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. This is really great. I love it. All right. Anything else that we should chat about that I, I just think you're awesome and amazing, and I think it's really cool. What I love um, your classes are starting in February. Am I right? Yeah. February 2nd. February 2nd. But, yeah. you know, I had such a good um, outreach to them, and I think since our last interviews, because they publish so close to when these classes start, people are like, oh, I want to do it, but it's too soon to sign up. And so I am working on my schedule for summer and fall to get more classes lined up. So um, you see a class that you want to do, join. I just started a Facebook group called Quilting with Carly. Uh And so if anyone wants to join that Facebook group, that's I'll post like awesome tutorials and Mm -hmm. sales and Um, blog posts and stuff it's kind of just a community spot so be sure to join that Facebook group and then also if you're interested in my digital designs I would highly recommend not only checking out the loyalty club because that's a really good bang for your buck but also if you're just wanting to purchase like um, just designs without doing the monthly yeah go to under digital designs choose design bundles yeah that's the very top um, choice right spot And these are like, anytime I do a collection of designs, I'll sell them as a bundle at a discounted rate as well. So like if you wanted to buy, so for instance, um, like I have an edge to edge that has three variations. And if you were to buy one separate, it'd be $45. That's really great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's only 30. And if you are a loyalty club member, you can still use your coupon code on the design bundles that are already discounted. So you can get a super deep discount if you put the design bundles and the coupon from the loyalty club together. So yeah, I try to make my designs super accessible and easy to use and um, cost effective, especially for, well, really whether you're a hobby quilter or a professional quilter, I try to just make it effective so that you can do more quilting for your buck. Yeah, no, I think it's great. Your stuff is so cool. Check out that stuff and join my Facebook group. Cool, awesome. All right, Carly, you're always fun and great. I'll keep you posted on our ridiculous idea. We'll see how it goes. All right, you're awesome. You're beyond awesome. You're like the coolest. I have so much fun with you. It goes so fast. Can you talk? We talked an hour again. It's craziness, right? I know. We're. I I think we're both long-winded, which is good. I like talking to other people who are long-winded too. (laughs) Very cool. So you've been listening to Just Wanna Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, and I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gar. If you like this podcast, keep listening. Also, we have a Facebook group. Come join us. We talk about a lot of things. We also have an Instagram account. And of course, most importantly, I really hope you get a chance to quilt today.